How's it going everyone? I wanted to do a video on my top five books that I've read in 2022. Um, I wanted to share with you guys what I'm reading and get some feedback on what you guys think about these books, um, the ideas, and interested to hear what you guys have uh, been reading that's exciting this year. Um, so to start, uh, number five is Speaking Being by Warner Earhart, or excuse me, it's by Bruce Hyde and Drew Kopp. Uh, so speaking being Warner Earhart, Martin Heidegger, and a new possibility of being human. Uh, this is a relative, relatively new book. Um, it's going to be exploring Warner Earhart and Martin Heidegger's ideas. Uh, Warner uh, is, I think he's still alive, um, but he's definitely old. Martin Heidegger, a uh, famous philosopher, has passed away um, in the 20th century, but um, it's a great book if you're looking to get into Heidegger's ideas um, and are a little bit intimidated by his work. Um, it's a um, transcript of one of Earhart's Est landmark seminars, so um, you get to experience that without actually going to one. Um, and yeah, I learned um, a great deal from it uh, about Heidegger and Earhart because uh, it's uh, the book's really great because it is going through the uh, seminar and as well uh, there's a, a section in the middle that is then juxtaposing Heidegger's ideas um, so Hyde and Cobb do a great job of um, kind of um, putting together um, uh, what makes sense of Heidegger's in relation to uh, what's going on in the um, um, the lecture uh, or the seminar at that time. Um, so some really great things that I got taken away is uh, taken have taken away from this is um, like your racket, what error calls your racket, um, kind of like that narrative that you tell yourself um, in order to explain your um, you know the things in your life. Uh, that uh, is controlling you. Um, it's um, something that you probably won't, you'll have a hard time admitting. Um, and uh, so I, I don't won't go into too much further, but uh, you get a lot more by reading it. Um, but another thing that, that I've taken away from this is like a saying that's, you know, if you can't be with something, if you can't be with something, it controls you. If you can be with it, then you are set free. Um, so that's the saying that I've remembered from this book and um, I've been sharing as well. Um, so definitely check this one out, Speaking Being. Uh, next one, number four, is the Russian classic Oblomov. Um, I listened to this one on audiobook. Um, there's a really good free one on YouTube. Um, yeah, it's the classic story of uh, Oblomov, the um, Russian uh, man who can't get off his couch and uh, tend to his estate, um, really get his life together. And it's supposed to be i guess a a way to um when it was written i forget exactly when it was written but a russian uh um a criticism on the russian um life at that time the russian culture russian um uh, politics at that time um but it's really interesting because you really sympathize with oblomov um, or he's just a character that, uh, some people sympathize with, some people don't. You're just like, you know, come on, man, get this, get it together. Um, which is definitely, you know, a way to, <laughs> to view it, maybe should view it, but it's, it, you know, it's, he's a great subject to, um, look at and explore because, um, he's taking, he's looking at society and, um, you know, seeing everyone uh, kind of run about and um, 
maybe not paying attention to the higher things in life, um, more the material, um, and kind of being disillusioned with everything. And, you know, he, he eventually is able to get up and, uh, because of, uh, love interest. Um, but, um, that eventually falls away. Um, and even though they, they still remain close, um, but yeah, I mean, just the exploring the, the subject of someone who's uh, disillusioned with society and just can't get himself up because of that. Um, and then also that need to go ahead and, you know, and live and, and function and uh, thrive in this world. Uh, it's just a, a very interesting uh, book to explore those ideas um, without specifically referencing any religion or uh, something like that. So number three is The Possessed by Elif Bot uh, Botsman uh, Adventures with Russian books and the people who read them. Uh, I read this earlier this year and it's a kind of a, a book about uh, Elif's uh, graduate experience. Um, she goes um, over to Yugoslavia, I think. Um, she's studying foreign language at Stanford. And she's really interested in classical literature, especially Russian literature. Uh, so this is where I found Oblomov and a bunch of other Russian uh, famous Russian books and authors and um, so it's a great uh, kind of autobiographical biography um, you know following Elif through her graduate years um, over to Yugoslavia her experience over there which is quite interesting um, and interesting I'm if you follow my videos and may if you know me I'm very interested in Gerard and in the last part of the book, she um, references Gerard because one of the um, one of her, I think, friends and relationships that she had, the guy that was she was with, was very interested in Gerard and kind of um, um, there's the the problem of the of the person or something like that. Um, I think is is something that they they talked about a lot. Um, and yeah, this the Oblomov thing. It's it's um, the problem of the person. You know, where where's the person in your um, you know material pursuit pursuits, your career pursuits, your um, relationship pursuits. You know, where where is the human being? Show me the human being um, in that as just a kind of um, uh, existential um, thought. Um, and uh, so he he was got really into Gerard, and he ended up going to a monastery um, because Gerard is kind of this his ideas you know are kind of apocalyptic in a lot of ways, and point to Christianity as a way to kind of get rid of these escalatory um, mimetic robberies that. Um, can eventually lead to uh, society's destruction, humanity's destruction. And so he says, like, you know, I'm going to go and live in a monastery and just kind of give up all my desires. And um, Alif took exception to that because she thought that, you know, sacrificing yourself, um, that just like that's what it means to be human. And there are beautiful ways that this uh manifests itself in the world you know she said I, you know i would i would be fine you know sacrificing myself in a relationship for example um just because it's so meaningful to me and um you know even if it is a little bit self-destructive in some ways you know it's just that's so personable and meaningful and, and beautiful in a lot of ways and in that way that was kind of um a wake up call for me because I was kind of um, in the camp uh, of her uh, boyfriend at the time, uh, thinking like, you know, Christianity and, and kind of giving up your desires is 
the only way to go and i mean there's definitely something to that but um being so focused um so kind of um dogmatic on someone's ideas or you know thinking that's the only way to think um is not uh helpful um and um or it's not it's not uh the um the best way i guess to be thinking about something you have to be open to other uh ideas and you know you can still keep the best parts you think that are important but you know they can also be a little bit self-destructive if you kind of say that that's the end of it um i wrote a i wrote a piece about this or kind of put together a little compilation of um some parts of this book on my sub stack that i'll include in the link because um and i shared it with um the gerard community that got some really good feedback um, on our facebook group and <laughs> if you're interested i'll put that in the um, description below um but um yeah it was just really helpful to kind of shake me out of this kind of um um uh, one-sided view of things um so number three or two is um sculpting in time uh by andrew tarkovsky andre tarkovsky the grush great russian filmmaker discusses his art um so this is a book by tarkovsky where he's going through uh his art his films um talking about them his philosophy um so it's such a treat i mean i got into tarkovsky i forget how i got into Tark Tark tarkovsky this year but um i'm going to do a top five videos of uh this year and there's some um videos of his that i'll uh, be mentioning but uh yeah all this stuff is absolutely brilliant and um so hearing him talk about the films his philosophy on life and and um uh, film and art uh, it's just absolutely wonderful um and yeah i highly recommend if you're a tarkovsky fan if you're a russian art fan if you're a film fan definitely um take a look at this book because it's it's absolutely wonderful and number one is the fourth political theory by alexander dugan um the contemporary uh russian philosopher um <clears throat> This is really great because it's like his magnum opus, I, I'd say, um, but um, you really get into uh, his his thesis of the fourth political theory, which is, um, just want to pull up exactly what it is because I sometimes have a hard time articulating it. So, um, just going to read this here all of the political systems of the modern age have been the products of three distinct ideologies the first and the oldest and oldest is liberal democracy the second is marxism the third is fascism the latter two have long since failed and passed out of the pages of history and the first no longer operates as an ideology but rather as something taken for granted the world today finds itself on a brink of po post-political reality one in which the values of liberalism are so deeply embedded that the average person is not aware that there is an ideolo ideology at work around them. As a result, liberalism is threatening to monopolize political discourse and drown the world in a universal sameness, destroying everything that makes the various cultures and peoples unique. According to Alexander Dugan, what is needed to break through this morass is a fourth ideology. One that will sift through the debris of the first three to look for elements that might be useful, but that remains innovative and unique in itself. Dugan does not offer a point-by-point -point program for this new theory, but rather outlines the parameters with which it might develop and the issues which it must address. Dugan foresees that the fourth political theory will use the tools and concepts of modernity against itself to bring in about a return of cultural diversity against commercialization as well as the traditional worldview of all the peoples of the world, albeit within an entirely new context. Um, written by a scholar who is actively influencing the direction of Russian geopolitical strategy today, 
The fourth political theory is an introduction to an idea that may well shape the course of the world's political future. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're into um, political theory, um, geopolitics, the Russian war with Ukraine right now, this is just um, a really great um, uh, read um, because he's, I mean, it, 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 he's getting into um, basically a new way forward, um, you know, beyond communism, fascism, um, and liberalism, you know, liberalism as one out against all those others. And so how do we take the best of all of them, um, uh, and, um, kind of go, go forward in a new direction. Um, and it's definitely helped me think, um, about history, about geopolitics, about civilization, culture, um, uh, a lot differently. Um, and it's cool to, I guess, read a foreign uh, philosopher and um, get their interpretation. Um, so yeah, that is number one. And honorable mention, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna put uh, this book I'm currently reading, Metaphors We Live By, uh, by George Lakoff and Mark Johnston, Johnson. Um, this was um, a book that I found from John Verveke's, um The Meaning Crisis series that he was recommending. Uh, this is just, I was struck by this one just because, uh, I mean, I don't know. The language is something I'm very interested in and, um, you know, by examining metaphors i mean it's kind of saying that everything that we live by is a metaphor um in way similar way it's just kind of um getting into the details of that has been very interesting um and it's um yeah just a really great book to explore you know the metaphors that we use um in our everyday language um and how we use language um as um vessels for communication of ideas and um to other people and um yeah so that's my top five uh for 2022 interested uh what you guys have been reading uh let you know what you think about these books and ideas and i will um put everything in the description um and yeah um see you guys in the next video and take care